learn about the significance of the girl statues of peace, which have generated controversy since first being erected in front of the Japanese embassy in 2011. Forced conscripted laborers are gaining attention in addition to victims of sexual slavery. We meet with a sculptor whose work aims to honor them. Yun Dongju depicted youthful conscience and a spirit of resistance during the Japanese colonial occupation. We look into the significance and remaining tasks of recovering lost artifacts as attention grows thanks to the recent return of a royal seal. Despite resistance from the Japanese government and far-right groups, statues of a girl symbolizing peace are being raised not only in Korea but overseas as well. We looked into their history and significance. The 1294th Wednesday demonstration is underway in front of the old Japanese embassy in Chongnogu, Seoul. 일단 일본이 뭔가 공식적으로 사과를 받아서 이제 할머님들이 뭔가 편안해지셨으면 좋겠어요. 이 문제가 이제 정부가 해결해야 할 일은 맞지만 우리가 본질적으로 해결해야 하고 그리고 할머님들께서도 원하시는 건 이제 기억 속에 남는 거기 때문에 그 일을 저희가 잘 해야 하는 게 맞다고 생각합니다. The late Kim Ak Soon was the elderly lady who on August 14, 1991, first exposed the issue of Japan's wartime sexual slavery to the world. Testimonies continue from other victims thereafter. A demonstration has taken place every week denouncing the unfair treatment of the women by the Japanese army and demanding a sincere apology from the Japanese government. This demonstration is also where the idea of a girl statue of peace was conceived. Sculptors Kim Eun Sung and Kim Seo Kyung happen to witness the Wednesday demonstrations by chance. 수요 집회가 쭉 시작이 되면서 2011년 12월 14일 날이 이제 할머님들의 수요 집회 천차 어, 집회를 이제 기념하기 위해서. 비석을 먼저 이제 제작을 하려고 했었는데 소녀상으로 확 이렇게 발전된 것이 그 계기가 되었습니다. The 123 cm tall bronze statue depicts a girl in the 1920s to the 40s. Ever since, 69 statues have been erected in Korea as well as 20 overseas as of August 2017. By watching the Japanese government distorting the history and not giving them a proper apology, I felt as a citizen we needed to do something to make things right. I thought protecting the statue would at least make the comfort woman feel better due to the status quo of the statues being damaged. The Japanese ambassador, who had demanded the statue's removal based on a 2015 agreement on the sexual slavery victims made without public approval, ended up returning to Japan. Seizing this as an opportunity, the Korean people strongly demanded a review of the agreement, which did not reflect a public consensus. Funds have been gathered to erect even more statues. 지난해 12월 일본 영사관 소녀상 철거 사태가 일어났을 때 성동구 학부모들끼리 모여서 우리 성동구의 평화의 소녀상을 세워야 되겠다. 특히 교육 특보로서 자라나는 미래 세대의 그 주인공인 청소년들에게 살아있는 역사 체험의 장으로서 소녀상을 세우자고 학부모들끼리 뜻을 모으게 됐습니다. At one district in Seoul, 1,000 local students and residents raised fund for a period of 100 days. The design of the girl statue was also created through direct participation by the students and residents. 가령 서 있는 소녀상 같은 것도 좋을 것 같아요. 그러면 사람들에게 기존의 소녀상보다 더 깊은 인상을 남길 수 있지 않을까 생각됩니다. 당당하고 두려움 없는 소녀상의 모습이었으면 좋겠습니다. The concerns and hopes of the local residents led to the birth of this statue of peace.
the hair cut roughly short, the uncomfortable bare feet with the heels raised, and a gaze which pierces through the pain of the times. The statue is an embodiment of these sexual slavery victims. I felt many things while doing this activity. When I learned about the historical background of the monument to the comfort woman, I felt so sad and upset that I wanted to do something. By looking at not only the statues being harmed, but also the constant conflicts, I think that we have to inform the others about the painful memories and the disastrous moments the victims have been through. Even after the statue was erected, middle and high school students of the district held flash mob events to address the issue of Japan's sexual slavery. Various campaigns related to the issue were also held. The girl statues represent peace, even as they call for contrition over the tragedies of war and of war crimes. There is just one way for the Japanese government to halt the propagation of the statues. They must acknowledge the war crimes perpetrated by Japan, offer a sincere apology, and restore the victim's honor and human rights. Ahead of Korea's National Liberation Day, a statue of conscripted laborers is being erected for the first time in this country. Why did the sculptor Lee won suk decide to create this work? We met with the artist to learn how he captures the tragedies of the past and present in sculptures. This studio is located in Ilsan, Gyeonggi-do province. It's here that we met with Lee won suk the artist who created the statue. Lee planned a work which was not only symbolic, but which made clear the devastating realities faced by the forced laborers. Interest in forced laborers during the Japanese occupation is at an all-time high, including the trampling of their human rights. According to a managerial document from Japan in 1947, 6,126,180 Koreans were forced into labor between 1934 and 1945. The workers were forcibly sent to mines and factories and made to work for over 12 hours every day. The first step in the process was gathering material. Lee toured museums to collect photographs of the conscripted laborers and to review the survivors' testimonies. A half a year of work resulted in a statue measuring 155 centimeters across and 180 centimeters tall. A nervous-looking girl grasped at the arm of an emaciated man with his ribs exposed. Through the man's resolute expression and the hammer in his fist, the artist aimed to express not only the realities of the era, but the determination to be free. It's worth noting that the man and girl in this sculpture are not arbitrary, but based on real-life people. Ji 15세쯤에 
학교를 관두고 이제 조병창으로 들어가요. 노동 착취라든가 위험으로부터 노출되어 있는 어린 소년들 뭐 이런 부분들을 많이 접했고요. 그 다음에 이제 또한 분은 이연형이라는 어르신이에요. 저분은 이제 2000년 초반에 돌아가신 분인데 무기를 빼돌려 가지고 독립군 쪽에다가 독립활동에 보낸다든가 그 다음에 독립자금을 이제 출연해 가지고 모아 가지고 또 보낸다든가 이런 식의 활동들을 하세요. 그래서 이두 분의 이야기를 한 공간에 묶음으로 해 가지고 그 시대 역사성을 담아내고 상상할 수 있도록 연출을 하는 거죠. The artist intentionally depicted a father and his daughter. His desire was to make it clear that the Japanese occupation and forced labor could have affected anyone. The statue is supplemented by lyrical depiction of the harsh conditions endured by the forced laborers, as well as gruesome scenes of accidents. 이 w o n s o k went through college in the late 1980s, a tumultuous period of democratization. Working full time as an artist after graduation, he sought to satirize society's unfair paradoxes in his works. 내가 살고 있는 사회, 그다음에 내가 살고 내가 살면서 느끼든 느끼는 어, 다양한 이야기들, 공동체, 뭐 어. 나라, 국가, 민족, 내지는 뭐 환경, 우주 이런 포괄적인 개념 속에서 내가 어떤 지점을 이야기하고 생각하고 또 그것을 발언하고 그것이 어떤 시각적 요소로 구현되는 거기 때문에 막연히 미술은 아름다운 미자가 아니라 세상을 보는 눈이고 세상을 표현하는 방식의 개념이기 때문에 Early one morning, Lee w o n s o k visits a park in Incheon. Currently used as a place of rest for Incheon residents, the site once housed an arms factory used to equip the Japanese colonial army. As a result, the statue of forced laborers will soon become a symbol of revealing the cruelty of Japanese colonialism. This work will allow the people to see the place of rest for the Japanese colonial army. As a result, the 또 진행형이고 좀더 생각하시고 역사를 생각하시고 그랬으면 훨씬 더 의미가 있을 것 같아요. 삶 자체가. 이원석, the realist sculptor, aims to reflect on the times and record them for posterity. In a time when beautiful and stylish works receive the spotlight, greater anticipation is gathering for his sculptures to shed light on social injustices and painful chapters of history. <music> Yoon Dong-ju is one of Korea's most beloved poets. He was a young man who sang of beauty in the darkest of times. We met with people commemorating Yoon Dong-ju in various ways to mark 2017 the 100th anniversary of his birth. A special exhibition is being held to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the poet Yoon Dong-ju's birth. Calligraphy artists capture in their text the impressions they received from Yoon's posthumous collection, Sky, Wind, Star, and Poem. 아무래도 희망이라는 문구가 가장 먼저 떠오르는데요. 이제는 그 시대에 윤동주가 살았던 그 치열했던 삶과 지금의 현재 우리 젊은이들이 살고 있는 이 치열한 그이 시대랑 다른 시대를 살고 있지만 그 윤동주가 말하고 싶었던 거는 희망이라는 거를 우리 메시지로 전달해 주고 싶었던 거라고 생각이 듭니다. While studying in Japan he was accused of being active in anti-Japan activities and was imprisoned in a cell in Fukuoka. In February of 1945, he died of unknown causes. He was just 28 years old. Yoon, having lived a short life of just 28 years under Japanese rule, would become known as a poet who dealt with shame. In his major works, Forward, easily written poem and star-counting night, 
Yun lamented the loss of his country and of the era, and honestly expressed the shame he felt. How did people react to encountering Yun Dongju in this new way? Another way to remember the poet Yun Dongju is to walk along the path he often strolled. The road which the poet enjoyed walking along as he wrote has changed over the years but it's being rediscovered through civic groups who still cherish his works. Members walk along the very streets which Yun Dongju passed while thinking of his poetry. They read his biography and his poems as they remember his era and life and reflect on their meaning. A walk along Yundongju Trail leads to the Yundongju Literature Center. It's a place where people visit throughout the year in search of traces of the poet. It's a special venue in which visitors can witness the works and life of Yun at once. 조금 더 실감나게 그분이 어떻게 살았을지 이런 거더 생각해 볼수 있고요. 직접 여기 와서 윤동주 시인의 육필을 직접 보고 그러니까는 약간 좀 소름이 돋는다고나 할까? 약간 좀 뭉클하고 좀 그런 게 있었어요. The final spot from which Yun Dongju is remembered is the school he attended, Yonsei University. The buildings where he attended lectures and the dorm he lived since entering the school in 1938 still remain. Yun Dongju가 졸업하기 전에 시집으로 출간을 하고 싶어서 자신의 시를 엄선해서 19편의 시를 모아 가지고 그 작품들의 창작 연도를 보면 38년 입학했을 때부터 41년 졸업하기 전까지 작성된 내용들이 많거든요. 그러니까 윤동주가 엄선했던 19편의 시편들은 연세 교정과 그리고 아마 기숙사 방에서 탈고를 하지 않았을까 이런 생각을 합니다. In 1941, at the height of Japan's oppression, when the use of the Korean language was banned outright, efforts were made to collect and publish his poems in Korean. But the result was failure. The title of the collection was Sky, Wind, Star, and Poem, and it's one of the most beloved poetry collections in Korea. 한국 사람 누구에게라도 좋아하는 시인을 물으면 제일 처음으로 떠오르는 시인이 윤동주 시인일 거라고 생각을 하고 사람들의 사유의 지평을 넓히고 또 한글이 그만큼 아름답게 시를 창작할 수 있는 언어로 격상시켜준 그런 시인이 아닐까 이런 생각을 하고 있습니다. Through the efforts of countless people who strive to read, remember, and encounter the works of Yun Dongju, the young poet remains by our side even to this day. Artifacts and cultural relics contain the history and culture of a nation. Many have been lost abroad for various reasons, ranging from war and looting to theft. We met with the people fighting the long, hard battle to recover illegally removed cultural artifacts. On his way back from a visit to the U.S. last June, President Moon Jae-in carried with him two royal seals of the Joseon Dynasty court called Abo. An Abo is a ceremonial stamp of the royal court. A symbol of the throne's authority, these stamps were smuggled to the U.S. during the Korean War and finally made their way home after a 65-year absence.
미국 뉴욕 국립도서관에서 아델리아 홀 레코드라고 불리우는 미국 측의 6.25 전쟁 미군 병사의 약탈 기록을 찾아내면서부터 이 어버의 반항 운동이 실질적으로 시작되었다고 할수 있습니다. Thereafter, a 1953 article reporting on the Ubo was found. Based on this, a recovery movement was launched in 2010. And by September of 2013, the LA County Museum expressed its willingness to relinquish the relics. 반환 결정이 났고 그 뒤에 돌아오는 과정에서도 약 3년여의 시간이 걸렸는데요. 에, 마치 에, 잃어버린 에, 우리 형제를 찾는 마음이라고 그럴까요? The Cultural Heritage Administration alone has confirmed 170,000 Korean artifacts which have been relocated overseas. Japan in particular looted countless artifacts during its colonial occupation. The number stands at at least 71,442 items, but recovery is very difficult. During normalization of bilateral relations in 1965, one of the supplementary agreements dealt with artifacts and cultural cooperation. It's based on this that the Japanese government is refusing to cooperate. 우리가 일부 문화재를 돌려받았습니다. 그런데 이 문화재 그 협정에 따라서 어떻게 보면 그 나머지 문화재에 대해서는 돌려받지 못하게 되는 제한되는 경우가 생겼기 때문에. However, it was found in 2014 that the Japanese government at the time had systematically hidden its list of Korean artifacts, leading to calls for a renegotiation. The Ogura collection includes Korean artifacts from multiple periods and categories, including paintings, sculptures, crafts, and clothing. The Ichun Stone Pagoda, built in the early Korea period, was moved to Gyeongbokgung Palace for a ceremony marking the fifth anniversary of Japan's occupation of Korea. This, too, was illegally taken from Korea by a Japanese collector. The citizens of Ichun formed a recovery committee to restore the pagoda. This empty lot is a space symbolizing their wishes. The Ichun citizens are even further pained by the fact that such a valuable artifact is being mistreated as a mere decoration in a hotel in Japan. 한때 우리 조상이 나라가 힘이 없어서 그러한 그 귀중한 탑이 이수할 곳에 있어야 되는데 이수할 곳이 아니고 추녀 밑에 있다. 그러면 거꾸로 당신들의 신사가 우리나라에 와서 어떤 그러한 불천일 때 당신들은 그게 이해하겠냐. The Ichun citizens have poured their efforts into the pagoda's restoration for 10 years, including 100,000 signature petition, ceremonies, and art contests. 아주머니, 할아버지, 하다못해 초등학교 어린애들고 손잡고 서명대 사면서 아저씨 이탑 언제 돌아오십니까 하는 이러한 엄청난 그. 그 관심과 그런 열망, 염원을 갖고 이 서명들을 하셔 주셨어요. There have been many attempts and efforts, but only 10,000 artifacts have been recovered so far. Experts point to the need for a strategy to recover the relics. 상당히 경우의 수가 많습니다. 그래서 맞춤형 환수 전략이 필요하고 어, 그러기 위해서는 왜그 문화재가 우리 그 나라로 돌아와야 되는지에 대해서 굉장히 스토리를 보강할 필요가 있습니다. 어, 한국은 어, 문화재의 보존, 관리, 이용 전 분야에 걸쳐서 품격 있는 나라구나 이런 인식을 심어주는 것이 굉장히 중요하다고 생각합니다. Cultural artifacts are priceless. They cannot be personally owned. They are cultural assets which embody the spirit of the times. 
greater attention and thought will be needed to restore truth and conscience to their proper, deserving place. Thank you.